Okay, so welcome to this next video uh, in the playlist on learning and memory. In this video, what we're going to talk about is sensitization, okay, uh, which is a type of uh, non associative procedural learning. Okay, right, so I'm going to start off by telling you what sensitization is, then we'll see an example of sensitization, then we'll look at an example of sensitization that, which is present within the mollusk, uh, Aplysia californica, okay, and then we'll see uh, the actual pathways underlying this sensitization uh, within that Aplysia uh, californica mollusk. Right, okay, so um, let's start with what sensitization is. So basically, you start with some sort of response to a stimulus, okay? So you have a stimulus, a sensory stimulus of some sort, and uh, then it triggers a response. And basically, sensitization is when you uh, increase the size of the response that you initiate to a stimulus because of some other stimulus, basically. So you have stimulus 2 over here. And basically, the arrival of stimulus 2 is then going to cause uh, you to initiate a bigger response to this other stimulus. So let me give you an example. Okay, so basically, if you're walking down the street in broad daylight, you might uh, have someone walking behind you, okay? So you might be hearing the sound of their footsteps, okay? And uh, you don't initiate a very big response to it, okay? On the other hand, if you're walking in the pitch black and you hear footsteps behind you, then you might initiate a startle response to it. The response that you will initiate to it is much increased, basically. So stimulus 2 is the fact that it's pitch black, basically. And stimulus 1 is the footsteps uh, that you're hearing behind you. Okay, so basically, it's a form of learning because you're using this information here to change how you respond to a certain stimulus, okay? Uh, so that's what sensitization is about. It's about changing how you respond to a stimulus, and generally it means increasing the response to a certain stimulus uh, because of another scenario, basically. Okay, right. Uh, so, what I'm now going to give you is an example of sensitization in a uh, mollusk known as Aplysia California, uh, californica. Okay, so Aplysia californica. Now, uh, Aplysia californica is basically a sea slug, okay? So it's a massive great slug that lives within the sea, and it lives in the sea near California, basically. It's also sometimes just called the Californian sea slug. Now, um, let's just draw a picture of uh, the Californian sea slug so that we know exactly what we're dealing with. So here is its tentacles, okay, like so. Okay, and then um, we're looking at it from the side at the moment, and then it will sort of get bigger, it will bulge out towards the middle, but it's not got a shell, it's not a snail, okay, so this is all just flesh here, like so. So this is what the uh, Aplysia californica actually looks like. Okay, and basically they are absolutely massive, they can get huge, they can weigh up to 7 kilograms. Uh, you know, the general size of this is around 5 inches, so these are big, big things. In fact, they're often uh, called hares, okay? Um, so they are a type of sea slug though, and they're a mollusk, so they're an invertebrate. Now, uh, they, are, they are a great... Um, animal that's used within neuroscience, basically. Neuroscientists love these creatures. And the reason that they use these creatures so much is because the human brain contains a hundred billion neurons. Okay, so let me write out a hundred billion. Okay, each of these neurons uh, can have around 10,000 connections to other neurons. Okay, the complexity is out of control, basically. It's incomprehensible. We are not in a position to understand the way the human brain works yet. 
okay? Whereas these Aplysia californica, they have around 20,000 neurons, okay? And another beautiful thing about them is that these neurons are absolutely massive. Each one of the neurons is enormous compared to human neurons, which makes electrophysiological analysis of these neurons much easier, okay? So this nervous system is more comprehensible. It's plausible that we could completely understand the nervous system of an Aplysia californica, and that's why they are so uh, appealing to neuroscientists, basically, because it's actually a system where we can potentially understand everything. Okay, and what's nice about them is you might think, well, they're so simple. What's the point of looking at their central nervous system? Maybe we could understand it, but what's the point? We want to understand humans' nervous systems. Uh, we want to understand things like where consciousness comes from, um, what's emotion, and things like that. Obviously, we're not going to be able to get the answers to those sort of questions by looking at the nervous system of a sea slug. But sea slugs do display certain forms of learning, and sensitization is one of the forms of learning that they display. Other forms include Pavlovian conditioning and habituation. I've got a video on habituation in which we discuss habituation in sea slugs, and I'm going to put up a video on uh, Pavlovian conditioning in which we'll discuss Pavlovian conditioning within sea slugs. Okay, right, uh, but at the moment we're discussing sensitization. So the point is that certain of these um, learning, certain types of learning we can see in sea slugs. So by looking at the nervous systems here, we can get an understanding of how these forms of learning occur. And those forms of learning are in humans as well, so it'll help us hopefully to uh, understand uh, learning in more detail, basically. So, right, that's the motivation for why we go uh, to the Aplysia californica rather than just looking at humans. So, what I now need to tell you about is something called the gill withdrawal reflex, which is a reflex within these Aplysia californica, because basically what we are going to see is we're going to see sensitization of this gill withdrawal reflex within these uh, Aplysia californica. Okay, right, so I firstly need to tell you what the gill withdrawal reflex is. So in order to understand this, we need to look at the Aplysia californica from above rather than from the side. So let's have a look at their other aspect. So if we're looking from above now, basically they will have these two oral tentacles, as they're called here, okay? Uh, then they'll have these two uh, extra little processes coming off the front here, okay? And then you'll have this sort of bulge in the middle here, okay, like so. And then at the back they have their tail. Now, on the top of this little bulge you have a very special structure, okay? Uh, you have a portion called the mantle, and then right at the end of the mantle, you have a special structure called the siphon. Okay, so this is the mantle here, this main portion. Oh dear, I'm not going to have room to write that in there, I haven't left myself space. Mantle, okay. Uh, and this ending, where we've got this little tube here, this is what's known as the siphon. Okay, right, so let me colour in these bits differently. So... Let me colour the mandel in orange here. So in orange you then have the mantle. And now in blue I'll have the siphon at the end. And the siphon is basically just a little tube, okay? And then what we have is a special little flap here of muscle, okay? And this is called the gill. So in red here, this is the gill, okay? Now, basically, what can happen is the gill muscle, this is a little flap of muscle, and it can contract, and it will contract over the siphon, basically. Okay? Now, the gill withdrawal reflex basically refers to the fact that if you bring in a little pipette here, so let's bring in a little pipette, and you spray water onto the siphon, okay, so we're spraying on water onto the siphon, uh, then what will happen is the um, 
Seasberg's response to that will be to contract the gill and uh, put the gill over the siphon. Okay, and that's called the gill withdrawal reflex, the protection of the siphon by the gill. Okay, right. So, what we now want to look at is the very simple neural circuitry that underlies this gill withdrawal reflex. And it's extremely simple. It only contains two neurons. Okay? So, basically, innovating the siphon, you have one sensory neuron. And innovating the gill, you have one motor neuron. Now, both of these neurons will have their cell body in a special structure known as the abdominal ganglion, which is down here. So this little ganglion here, and remember a ganglion is just the name for a collection of cell bodies. Okay, so this is the abdominal ganglion of the Aplysia californica. Okay, so let me draw it down here now. So here we have some ganglion, this abdominal ganglion. Okay, and basically the neuron which innervates the siphon is known as the L1 sensory neuron. Okay, so let me draw it here. So this is the cell body of the L1 sensory neuron. I'm already regretting this because I'm not going to have enough space, but never mind. So here's the cell body of the L1 sensory neuron. And basically, it's going to innovate the siphon. Okay, so let me just draw a little siphon out here. Okay, and I'll colour that in in blue. Like so. So, when you spray water onto the siphon, okay, what will happen is that will activate this L1 sensory neuron that innervates the siphon. And then the L1 sensory neuron will synapse onto another neuron here, which is basically the motor neuron, okay? And this motor neuron is specifically called the L7 motor neuron, okay? So this is called the L7 motor neuron. So L1 is a sensory neuron, I'll just put SN for short for sensory neuron, and then L7, which I'll colour in in turquoise here, so here's the cell body of L7, it will then go off and innervate the gill of the Aplysia californica. Okay, so here then is the gill of Aplysia californica. So I'll colour that in in red. And basically, what will happen is when you uh, spray water onto the siphon of the Aplysia californica, it will then activate the sensory neuron, and the sensory neuron will then activate the L7 motor neuron, and then the L7 motor neuron will activate the gill, and that will cause the contraction of the gill, and it will contract over the siphon, covering up the siphon, and that's the gill withdrawal reflex. So we've now looked at the gill withdrawal reflex in a little bit more detail. What I now want to discuss is how you're going to sensitize this. So basically, in our old nomenclature up here, the stimulus is the water that's being applied to the siphon. The response is the contraction of the gill. What we want to do is apply some other stimulus, stimulus 2, which will result in the response, which is the contraction of the gill becoming bigger to the same sensory stimulus, i.e. the same amount of water, the same temperature water being applied onto the siphon. So we want to see sensitization of the gill withdrawal reflex. Now how does this occur? Well basically, uh, if you deliver an electrical shock to the head of the Aplysia californica, okay, so what we're going to do is electrically shock the <laughs> At head of the um, Aplysia californica, shown crudely here. Okay, so I'll colour that in in yellow. Okay, so we're going to deliver an electrical shock to the head of the Aplysia californica. And basically, after you've done that, if you then spray water onto the siphon of the Aplysia californica, the amount of contraction that you get within the gill is hugely increased from what it was when you performed the identical experiment before you had delivered the electrical shock. Okay, so you've got sensitization of the gill withdrawal reflex. The response to the stimulus is greater because of this other stimulus having just been delivered, okay, which is the electrical shock. So basically, and the electrical shock is affecting the Aplysia californica's response to uh, having water dropped on its siphon.
Okay, right. So, what we now want to look at is why does this occur, basically. Okay, so, basically, there is another neuron within the uh, abdominal uh, ganglion here. Okay, and I'll put this here. Okay, and this is called the L29 neuron. And basically, it's going to become active when you deliver the electric shock. Okay, now it's not a direct thing. This is an interneuron, in fact, so it's not a sensory neuron. Okay, so there will be pathways before this that we're skipping out. But overall, what's going to happen is when you deliver the electric shock to the head of the Aplysia californica, that activates this L29 interneuron within the abdominal uh, ganglion of the Aplysia californica. And this basically has an axo-axonic synapse. So it synapses onto the nerve terminal of uh, the L1 sensory neuron. Okay, so let's colour in uh, L29 in a specific colour. So we'll have it in blue here. So basically, when you have an axon synapsing onto another axon, that's called an axo-axonic synapse. Okay, so between L29 and also L1, we have an axo-axonic synapse. And L29 is basically going to activate the release of a greater amount of neurotransmitter from L1 onto L7. Okay, so let me repeat that. When you uh, electrically shock the head of the Aplysia californica, okay, so here's the electric shock, it will lead to the activation of this L29 interneuron, which is within the abdominal ganglia of the Ecclesia californica. That will then have an axon which synapses onto the axon of the L1 sensory neuron in an axo-axonic synapse. And the result of L29 stimulating uh, the axon terminal of the L1 sensory neuron is that when this L1 sensory neuron fires, because we are dropping a water droplet onto the siphon of the Aplysia californica, then the L1 neuron will release a greater amount of neurotransmitter than it would have if the L29 neuron hadn't fired. Okay? And then that will result in a greater amount of neurotransmitter reaching the L7 motor neuron, and hence you'll get a greater stimulation of the L7 motor neuron, so it will fire a greater frequency of action potentials, and it will stimulate uh, the gill muscle to contract uh, more, basically, so you'll get an increase in the response. So that is the neural mechanism underlying uh, the sensitization of the gill withdrawal reflex. Okay, what we now want to look at is we want to look at this axo-axonic synapse in more detail. We want to see what is this L29 neuron going to release onto the axon terminal of this L1 sensory neuron. And how is that going to result in an increased amount of neurotransmitter being released? Okay, but we'll do that in the next video.